Okay, hi, we're going to talk about the uh, transformation of the sine function. Uh, we've already talked about the transformation of the cosine function with all of the transformations done to it. We're now going to talk about the sine function with all the transformations done to it as well. So, first things first. The first thing that I always look for is always is there a vertical shift. So if we take a look at this original generic function here, which is y equals d plus a sine of the quantity bx minus c where D represents your vertical shift. So I'm always going to look for, am I taking my center of axis and moving it up or down? So in this case, I am, because I have a value of positive 4 that is being added or subtracted to the actual function. So in this case, I'm actually taking a positive 4 here, and I'm adding it to this function. So I have a vertical shift here, and my vertical shift is up 4. So what that means is that I'm going to come over to my graph, and I'm just going to do these things as I move along. I'm going to come over to my graph here. And this graph means that the original function is centered about the, y, uh, the x-axis is when, when y is equal to 0. So what I'm doing is basically taking this axis of my original function and moving it up 4. So when I do that, I'm not changing this x-axis. I'm just changing where is my center, uh, where is it located around? Where is my pattern now located around? So it's located around positive four. So I have one, two, three, four, and I'm going to draw in a dashed line for my new axis. So here it is. So there's my dashed line for my new axis. So now what I take a look at is after I have that up for, I'm going to take a look at my amplitude. And the amplitude is the absolute value of the coefficient of the actual function. So my function here has a negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So my amplitude is positive 3. So the amplitude here is just 3. And remember, that's just a measurement of the halfway point between your maximum and your minimum. But on this, we haven't graphed it yet, so I don't know the halfway point between the maximum and the minimum. So what you just need to know is that it's the multiplier of your function, and that's how we do it when we want to use it for graphing. Period. The period is 2 pi divided by b. Well, b is the coefficient of x. So if I come up here, I can still look at this as being 2 pi divided by 3, which 3 is the coefficient of x. So I take 2 pi divided by 3. And I'm going to put this in simplest form if it's not. So 2 pi divided by 3 already is in simplest form because 2 over 3 can't be reduced. I leave it as its fraction. So my intervals. So my interval steps, remember, is my period broken into four pieces. So, and those are pieces are four equal spaced out pieces. So whenever I divide, dividing allows me to take whatever I have and make it into equal groups of that amount. So 2 pi over 3 needs to be broken into equal groups of 4, so I divide by 4. So 2 pi over 3 divided by 4 is the same thing as if I multiply. So if I take the idea of fractions, if you're dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to multiply by 1 fourth, which is the same thing as dividing by 4. Because in this case, it gives me 2 pi over 12. And 2 pi over 12 can be reduced to being pi over 6. So each step from the beginning of my piece of uh, where this function is going to be is going to start off at some value. And it's going to go the next interval will be pi 6 away from the starting point. And then the next interval after that will be pi 6 away from that piece. So the interval is important because I'm going to use this to add to get each particular piece of my uh, whole period. So the phase. Now the phase. The phase shift is dealing with what does this, okay, what effects does this have on my actual function? By changing the period, it changes the phase of my actual function, because the phase of your function normally went from 0 to 2 pi. Well, if I have a period change, it's, it's going to shrink it in there. So the phase is just telling me what is my starting point and what is my ending point of this function. So the way you do that is because the starting point and end point is affected by the period, and it's also affected by how much you shift the graph. We set it up on the interval. So interval notation in algebra is used with a compound inequality. I'm going to continue to do the same exact thing. The original function went from zero to went from zero to two pi, 
That would have been if that was the sine of x, but I don't have the sine of x anymore. I have the sine of 3x minus pi. So what I do is I say 3x minus pi is now on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So now I go through and I start solving for x. So plus pi, plus pi, plus pi. So now I have pi is less than or equal to 3x, which is less than or equal to 3 pi. So the last step I now have to do is divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get my interval is x is less, uh, greater than or equal to pi over 3, which is less than or equal to, so 3 divided by 3 is 1, so this is just pi. So what this now does is it gives me the interval of what my function starts and ends at, which is it starts at pi over 3, and it's going to take it to pi to do one complete cycle of the sine. So the sinusoidal wave looks like this. It goes, starts at zero, goes up to its maximum, comes back to zero, goes down to its minimum, and back to zero. So that length of time, okay, takes, or not time, but that length of the interval goes from starts at pi over three and it ends at pi. So what I'm going to do here, okay, I could write this out in step by step, or I can look at this and go, okay, I'm starting at pi over three. My interval step is pi over six. So my interval step is how I'm going to start to set up my graph. So I start to set up my graph by calling each step pi over 6. So I go pi over 6, pi over 6, another 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 pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 6. So I'm going to start to label these points. Well, pi over 3, okay, if I take a look at this, is 2 pi over 6. So at 2 pi over 6, that is pi over 3. So I now have my starting point labeled as pi over 3. And to continue on from there, I just go pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 6. So my next point is going to be here. Well, pi over 6, so if this one here is 2 pi over 6, this is going to be 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. Okay, And the reason I get that is because I'm taking pi over 3 and I'm adding to it my interval of pi over 6. So this is labeled as pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 3 pi over 6. So to get to the next one, that's another pi over 6. Well, pi over 2 plus pi over 6 is 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And the next thing I do is I continue on that with another one. And I continue on and I do my next step. So 2 pi over 3, add another pi over 6. Well, that's 5 pi over 6. So this is now 5 pi over 6. And then last but finally, I continue on with the function to go on, and my ending point is 6 pi over 6, which is pi, pi in general. So now I have my graph completely labeled. So what I can do from here now is that I can now graph everything I have just by strictly following the sine function. And the sine function starts at 0, it goes to a maximum or a minimum depending on the function's positive or negative. So if I take a look at this function, the last thing i got to do is come up here and look at what type of pattern am I going to have. This function is negative because it's a negative 3. So it's going to start at my zeroing value. And the zeroing value, it just means on your new axis, where does it run through that particular axis? So for this one, the new one, it's not necessarily starting at here. It's starting at the point of pi over 3 and then up 3. So this coordinate is pi over 3, 4, not 3, sorry. So pi over 3, 4 is my starting point. Okay? So what I've done is I've taken my graph, moved it right then up. So this actual value is pi over 3, 4. So it's just looking at my zeroing value of where it starts. It's not actually a zero value. I'm just talking about it in the sense of, Here's my new axis, where is it going through this particular axis? Then that way it can just be used to follow a pattern. So my amplitude. So my amplitude is I need to use that to go up or down. So this function is negative, so I'm actually not going to go to a maximum, I'm going to go to a minimum first. So the minimum I go to, the amplitude is 3. So I need to go down a measure of 3. So when I go over my next value, it's now 1, 2, 3. So when I actually go ahead and plot this, I'm here. So at pi over 2, I am down 3 to 1. Then I come back, my next value is going to be back to a zeroing of this value here around this axis. And then my next value is going to be a, a maximum, so I go up 3. So 1, 2, 3. So I am up 3 at pi over 6. 
And then I'm going to come back down to the new axis we have here. It's just the idea of this value is actually pi 4. Okay, so if that was a coordinate pair, it would be pi 4. So what then I then do is just take this and I connect it with a smooth curve. So here's my smooth curve, and then that is now graph. So I now have, for this particular function, over one period. Again, this is only over one period. I now have my function graph. So I hope that helps.